This is Jeffrey Brownson from Penn State, giving you a little bit of background on life cycle assessment and how we apply that to solar energy, in particular uh, thinking in terms of photovoltaics. So life cycle assessment uh, gets abbreviated in uh, common terms as LCA. You may have seen LCCA, that would be life cycle cost analysis, but that's not what we're doing here. We're doing life cycle assessment. And to do that, we need to bring in some language. Uh, the term framework and stages are going to be used in the uh, next couple of boards that we're working through. Keep in mind frameworks, life cycle assessment frameworks, and life cycle stages. Then the interesting thing about life cycle assessment is that we are emphasizing an iterative and transparent process as we move along. And in order to uh, understand what the value of life cycle assessment is, you have to understand that we're ultimately monitoring flows of energy and matter surrounding a process like the manufacture of photovoltaic modules. This work is actually based on information that you can find openly through the uh, United States uh, Environmental Protection Agency. They have a life cycle assessment principles and practice document that is uh, open and freely available. The standards that we're talking about for life cycle assessment are actually based on uh, in the International Organization for Standardization, ISO, and that would be ISO 1440, which is Principles and Frameworks for Life Cycle Assessment, and ISO 1444, the Requirements and Guidelines for Life Cycle Assessment. So the those are uh, documents that actually uh, must be purchased to get access to, but the EPA document is very thorough and explains quite a bit about what we're talking about. Our emphasis will be today on uh, ISO 1440, the Principles and Frameworks. There's that framework term popping right up. Life cycle stages are, the term stages is used to basically break up the life cycle of a technology, say a photovoltaic, into chunks, into timely chunks. And in this case, we're going to think about PV, photovoltaic materials, and energy flows. And so here you see from the EPA, again, this is a 2006 document, that I'm going to go back one. That we have um, the life cycle is the whole lifespan of a product. That would be from raw materials acquisition, that is a stage, to manufacturing, to use of the, the material like the photovoltaic panel, to the disposal or recycling of the panel. Now, here's that image that I had before. We can simplify that and, and look at stages of a photovoltaic module as having kind of a simple uh, cycle uh, uh, from mineral processing to technical processing into modules to use and then recycle or disposal. And what you'll notice is that there's also going to be inputs of materials and energy. And over the different stages of the life cycle there will also be outputs of atmospheric emissions, that could be CO2, uh, waterborne wastes, that could be uh, different chemicals, solid wastes, co-products, and other releases. These are very important things to follow, and in particular when we're talking about new technologies or emerging and expanding technologies like photovoltaics. So here's a detailed view of the stages of a life cycle for a photovoltaic module. This is uh, work that we had done in my own research group. This is basically very detailed. We see materials processing, technical processing, the use disposal, the PV module can have many different states from new to used to disposed and recycled. It's also very detailed so we start looking at that and we encounter this idea that we don't really know where to start with this. How would we take a look at photovoltaics and and do more and and be able to know where should I start or where should I stop in my analysis of the life cycle in terms of materials and energy flows what are the things that I should be measuring when I'm looking at uh, devices like photovoltaic modules and what's going to be the quality of the data that I measure in the first place now 
all of those kind of basic questions when you look at a very large and complicated system for technologies ultimately leads us to the need for a framework something to hang our hats on and structure our analysis and our uh, process with and so we have the life cycle assessment framework uh, the framework itself you'll see in the upper right is broken into four different um, phases and so as I move through those I'm going to uh, be connecting the box to the definition so we start with goals goal defining goals and scoping so the, one of those things that you're doing is what is motivating you to look at photovoltaics and, and what is the product, what's the process of the activities for making photovoltaics and what's the context that you want to assess this. Are we assessing photovoltaics for pollutants or are we looking at this for uh, CO2 emissions or energy demand? The second part of the framework is inventory analysis and inventory analysis is where we are actually identifying what we're going to measure and collecting data on those measurements over the course of some period of time like a, a year. The impact assessment is taking that information that we've measured and assessing the human and ecological effects of energy, water, and material usage uh, on um, uh, in terms of all the measurements that we've made. Throughout that you see how these three, this pink, green, and blue box are all lined up on one side and then there's a very large fourth box. That fourth box is interpretation and that's basically saying that there is going to be within this uh, idea of goals and scope, inventory analysis, and impact assessment the coupling or the parallel work of interpreting what we're doing as we're moving along through the life cycle assessment framework. And interpretation is really evaluating the results and it becomes a very important part of life cycle assessment because life cycle assessment itself is an iterative process and will actually go back to goals and scope number one as we after we've collected data to see if we might need to shift our goals and scope or whether we want to uh, remain within the scoping in time and place for our project. So here's our LCA framework with goals and scope, inventory analysis, impact assessment, and interpretation listed. And I want to bring these guys together by pointing out some key parts of life cycle assessment. So the goals definition in goals and scope defines the motivation for doing a project for you know why are we actually analyzing something so goals become very important the scope in goals and scope limits us to a certain time and, and a certain limitation of space are we studying the entire planet in space or are we limiting our spatial extent of measurement to somewhere nearby the plant where something is being manufactured or the uh, part of the world that the modules are being uh, uh, used. The scope can also be the time in terms of the different stages. Remember stages were an important part of the life cycle and scoping in time uh, has actual terms to it. There are these things called cradle to grave where basically we're following all of the life cycle of a product like a photovoltaic module. We assume from the point that we get the raw materials that would be the cradle all the way to through the technological manufacture through use to disposal that would be a grave uh, however lately cradle to cradle has become much more uh, promising in many technologies and that's basically thinking about a continual cycle of recycling of materials and technologies so we recycle a cradle back to a cradle the lower two uh, stage arcs are going to be cradle to gate and this would be gate would be to compare from me, uh, acquiring minerals and materials to manufacturing them in a uh, plant and then selling them to be used in, in the public where the leaving of the factory might be a gate and there are other uh, gate to gate studies where we break up the different stages and so you want to know what the scope is and you want transparency in what the, that scope is when you are reading other people's research. So life cycle assessment 
by itself, probably the biggest part of life cycle assessment is that it's not a one-time deal. We actually count on life cycle assessment to be iterative in nature, to actually keep going over the years where the data quality becomes better and better as we get better and better at measuring and we get uh, better at understanding the scoping and the, and the goals of our project. So we will not we will see that life cycle assessment might be reported in the 80s or in the 90s or in the 2000s and we want to be cognizant that something might have happened since then that that we really do want to be aware of some of the most up-to-date life cycle assessments for photovoltaics because a a life cycle assessment in the 1980s is probably not going to be as relevant for module manufacture in the 2000s right now. Now on top of that, life cycle assessment is assumed or is or is the an integral impact inside of life cycle assessment is that life cycle assessment must be transparent. We must know what the data is that is being collected. We must have access to the data and in general life cycle assessment is going to have people looking at the methods and the scoping that another uh, group did uh, and the transparency needs to be there so that a third party can look at the life cycle assessment and validate whether or not it is a robust analysis all by itself. All right, so with that we've covered a short summary of the life cycle assessment frameworks, the idea of the stages of a life cycle for a technology like photovoltaics, and the fact that we're following the flows of energy and matter, both the inputs and the outputs, and then key to life cycle assessment is an iterative and transparent process. And I hope this has been helpful for you as an introductory uh, element for life cycle assessment, and have a great day.